Welcome to the Heavy Robotics Intro to Kinematics Lecture Series, where we're going to go over robotics concepts using heavy actuators as a tool for learning and research. These videos aim to help build a framework for robot kinematic fundamentals and to be used by researchers, educators, and students. These videos are going to be short and sweet and cover big topics in robot kinematics. However, these videos alone won't teach you all about robot kinematics, but they can be used as a starting point. In this first lecture, I'll be going over something very important in robotics, how rigid bodies or collection of points move in space. There are two main ideas of how rigid bodies can move in space. That's rotation and translation. First, we'll talk about coordinate frames to understand where a point is in space. Let's say in this case, we have a point P somewhere floating in a 2D space. Then let's establish two different coordinate frames with different origins we could then write the location of point P with respect to each corner frame as an X and Y position relative to the frame. Next, let's go over the case where a point is translated in a 2D corner frame at origin zero. So let's say we have two points now, P and Q. The motion from points P to Q becomes a vector D describing the displacement between the two points. Since D is a vector, it has now has a direction and magnitude, even though it's only represented by the same two numbers like points P and Q. But points are not the only things that can translate. We can also describe the translation of the coordinate frame itself. In this case, we have two coordinate frames that are only translated from one another with no rotation yet. And then we have a point P in space. Now we want to know how to describe the displacement between the two coordinate frames. Displacement of the two frames can be described relative to the point P. So if we know the position of point P relative to frame zero and frame one, the displacement vector D becomes the difference between point P relative to frame zero and to frame one. So at the moment, we're building up the way to talk about object transformations in space. So next, let's tackle 2D planar rotation, which is a more complex motion than translational displacement, but understanding the rotation of frames will be critical for robotic systems. So probably the best way to understand rigid body rotation is to set up a rotation problem. So let's say you have a coordinate frame with an origin at zero. We have a vector VA rotated some angle clockwise from the frame. And we know the end point at the vector is XY. Then we have another vector VB rotated some angle from the frame with an endpoint X prime and Y prime. Lastly, let's define the angle between these two vectors as theta. And the question becomes, how do we find the endpoint X prime, Y prime of vector VB? So this X prime and Y prime can be easily calculated with a little bit of trigonometry. So now this simple system of equations can be rewritten as a linear expression between two matrices. And this transformation matrix is a special matrix called the rotation matrix. And this matrix can be used to represent the rotations of points. It can also be used to represent the rotation of vectors themselves. And lastly, it can be used to show the rotation of coordinate frames. All right, the last cool thing to show about the rotation matrix is the inverse of a rotation matrix can be used to calculate the inverse operation of the frame transformation. So after going from frame zero to one, the rotation inverse can be used to represent the motion from frame one to zero. And that's a pretty powerful property of the rotation matrix. All right, now it's time for the fun part. What does this all look like in code and on hardware? I'll write in Python to review the rotation transformation matrix and use heavy actors and API to monitor actuator feedback. The goal is to find the end position of a rigid link attached to an actuator. The first thing is to initiate our start position as a column vector of the link's initial X and Y positions. Create a 2D rotation matrix function using NumPy. Then you are constantly getting actuator feedback and updating the change in theta. Lastly, we perform the matrix calculation to update the position and draw that position. This is what this looks like in hardware with the end effector position being plotted and I am moving the link around. Well, thank you for watching 
and visit Heavy Robotics to learn how our products can help with robotics research and be used as a tool for robotics development and education.